is the camera. Anybody else? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. And uh, I wish we could come up with an answer today and take a vote on it, but I really don't think we're going to come up with a vote we could have proper guidance to do. What I can do is uh, I'm kind of a lamed up chairman, no doubt about that, but uh, I could make a commitment that I could get with Director Wosley and we could set up a meeting and Commissioner Drew set up a meeting with uh, the new chief of staff at the governor's office, discuss what we've heard on the public record, discuss what the cattlemen heard in their uh, meeting the other day, and uh, come up with some type of game plan that we can bring back to commission to take some type of formal <coughs> action to go forward, or maybe it doesn't even take formal action. Maybe after meeting with the governor's office, the governor's office might say, we'll work with the Department of Ag, Department of Wildlife, and we're going to do something. I, I don't know if it takes formal action. It might just take a meeting with the governor's office. I'm not sure, but I think our next step in this process is to sit down with the governor's office and explain all the public testimony we had, the general feeling we have from the commission. Mr. Newton? Uh, while we've been sitting here, I've been going through various statutes. When you, if you decide to go along that path, you probably want to attempt to involve someone from our office. at Most pay, likely you. At a pay grade <laughs> above mine, I'm hoping. Um, under NRS 228-190, the Attorney General has the authority to intervene um, in any action or proceeding that deals with the waters or interstate streams located within Nevada or the public lands and to the waters there too when they're under located in the state of Nevada. So I believe that the Attorney General has the ability <coughs> to intervene in a manner in which you're discussing. So I just, I was looking up the governor to see if there was something in his area of the statutes. I didn't find anything there, but then I went to my, to the attorney generals and this is here so okay. that's another direct option i believe that's applicable and i'm sure they'll be real happy i brought that up yeah but <laughs> yeah i'm sure but those are the discussions we need to have and, and like i said i committed to having those discussions with the governor's office and everything just with the changes we didn't get there uh we can continue to work with mr newton but i i don't know if we need a formal action from the commission but it, if we want to, we can, but I would suggest that Commissioner Drew and I and Director Wosley get with the new Chief of Staff in conjunction with the Attorney General's office. And I would like it to be Mr. Newton because he is the one that sat in these meetings the most and understands what we're saying, or has heard the public testimony also, and, and heard the testimony or the comments made by the Commission so we can convey them accurately. Uh, but I'd, I'd say that's the avenue we need to go at this point and then bring it back to a future commission meeting uh, whether we need to take action or not at the future commission meeting will be determined upon the outcome of a meeting commissioner bliss i have a question uh for mr newton um is there a time frame um when we could intervene is there a cutoff date when you can intervene into a lawsuit Generally, there is, and I don't know in this case where the matter sits. I, I pulled the complaint the other day so that I could go through that. There has not been an amended complaint filed, but I don't know what the rest of the timelines are on it. That's something I'll still have to look at. Okay, it seemed to me that that would, should be somewhat of a top priority because if it's, we got an early deadline and, I mean, we're going to have to get on this or we need to find out our time frame. I would make a commitment to try to have a meeting with the governor's office within the next two weeks. Commissioner Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think if we're not going to make a decision on this today, at least I'd like to voice uh, my opinion as to where I stand on the issue. And I agree with, with totally with what Commissioner McBeth said and uh, I think that if, if we decide that, that you guys are going to go meet with the governor that is the message that needs to be conveyed from my standpoint
Mr. Wallace? I, I do agree with that. <clears throat> and I'm not going to keep beating it, but that, that's where I'm at as well. Something needs to be done. We can't just leave it sit. And uh, that, that's kind of where we're at. We just keep kicking it down the road. It's time to actually do something. So the message we would be taking back is we're ready to go. Tell us how we can. Commissioner Macbeth. Um, you know, I have a, you know, I think on the one hand, you know, having a very uh, direct letter to the governor wouldn't be a bad idea, but I'm also a realist and realize that, uh, you know, the commission shouldn't, uh, you know, put the governor on the spot. Uh, the, <clears throat> these are complex things. I realize that they, you know, complex issues, and it's not just about wildlife. There's, you know, obviously, you know, sage grouse and, and, and there's all kinds of other things the governor has to think about that are well above what we're concentrating on. Um, but I really do feel that uh, we have an opportunity, and uh, and there's multiple reasons that have been brought out, uh, and this, these statements uh, that were uh, made by Ted Cook uh, uh, are very, very interesting and I would think that the governor would want to uh, maybe um, you know get some direct uh, feedback from uh, the US Fish and Wildlife Service uh, with regard to that issue and uh, and uh, because that that could make uh, you know with the issues we're having with sage grouse that seems to me to be the you know the, the what should tip everything over to get on this issue and so I I, I hope you know because I'm I'm two weeks, I'm no longer a wildlife commissioner. Uh, this has been an issue I've, like, we, you know, uh, 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 Dr. Dixon has, uh, you know, mentioned, uh, has been something that we've discussed for a very, very long time. And I just feel that, you know, the department will, if it doesn't make a maximum effort to do something here and convince the governor that we need to do this for the state, uh, that we're missing an opportunity and it's and, and it's not going to be good for the state and you know I'm interested about this legislation that's uh, being pushed forward but it's just a proposed legislation there's no no guarantee where it's going to go um, you can still move forward on multiple fronts and uh, and in fact intervening in, uh, in a lawsuit uh, gives it just more leverage that maybe something will even happen on that end and so I just hope that, you know, I know uh, the chairman is only on for another couple of weeks himself, and uh, uh, but I would uh, hope that whoever is going to be taking his spot uh, will continue to push this issue forward because I think it's very, it's, it is probably, um, sh you know, next to sage grouse, the number one issue that we should be, you know, looking at as a wildlife agency. And so I hope we do something. Any other commission comments? Director Wosley, do you have any comments or uh, concerns of what we're talking about here? And if we were to set up a meeting, uh, my calendar is a little more open than yours. Maybe you might want to set it up so you make sure it fits in with your calendar. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's the appropriate next step. I mean, I don't, I don't want anybody to think that the department doesn't recognize the issue or doesn't concur that there's a problem. Um, I think the question is what can we do, uh, how do we do it, and, and when do we do it? I think that any comment or any position that the department takes, we want to make sure that it, it strengthens the, the state's claim or cause, it strengthens NACO's, uh, and it doesn't undermine that process. And I think that's where the answers and the support uh, from, coming from communication and dialogue with the governor's office can help us. Any other commission comments? To <clears throat> Commissioner Bliss. Um, <clears throat> reading through uh, some of Policy 67 on uh, on this issue, um, I, I <clears throat> excuse me. 
I know that um, in some of the flights that uh, the Area 14 aerobologist has taken um, in the Cortez range and um, and observed and counted the number of horses that are in that range and, and um, has reported that um, and that's just one instance there I mean there's that all over the you know all over the state actually um, has there been any written um, letters or been any contact with the BLM over um, some of the horse issues that are going on according to the policy and how the policy reads uh, I, I can tell you that um, around the state that our our biologists our regional offices uh, interact uh, weekly if not more frequently uh, on wild horse issues I mean it, it's well beyond the, the local levels I mean I think that the BLM would appreciate some help um, I know their their hands are tied in some instances they're just as frustrated as we are um, we share our our incidental observations when we do our, our big game surveys um, those data don't have a lot of value for them because they have standard protocols survey protocols that they're supposed to follow but when we physically observe numbers that are higher than what their population estimates are which are much higher than what AMLs are uh, it's it's that's why I say that you know we recognize it's a problem they recognize it's a problem the question I think the, the to me, the main question before us today is what is the most effective way for us to achieve some change? And it has to be you know, within our authority. It needs to be, you know, the broader the blessing, uh, hopefully the, the stronger the message. Um, and so I think in the next couple of weeks, if we can get some clarity from, from the governor's office and perhaps we can include the Department of Ag in whatever action we take, um, and then it can hopefully be elevated and, and hopefully be more effective than what we've historically been. And I think that, you know, we've, it's crystal clear what our position is on it, the, the habitat degradation. We're in a drought, uh, three years of a catastrophic drought. There's, there's no denial, there's no question that there are some habitat impacts. Um, again, the question is how can we be most effective? And you brought up uh, with the Department of Ag. Uh, this is my opinion. I'd like to have other commissioners chime in if they have an opinion different than mine. But I think this original meeting we have uh, with the new chief of staff or with whoever from the governor's office they feel appropriate, that we do it as endow on the Wildlife Commission and explain our issues and get our issues out on the table as our issues and then see if we want to couple our issues with working towards that goal with the Department of Ag. I, I think we have two different interests working towards the same goal, but I, I think they're separate enough that we need to have our discussion separate from Ag and maybe Ag have a similar discussion with the same people we do and then see how we marry up and go forward. I do think we'll be stronger marrying up and going forward, but I do really think we have two separate issues on the table and we need to discuss them originally separately. Anybody else have any comments? Commissioner Drew? I guess in the meantime, um, we haven't had any, that I know of, any contact or correspondence directly with NACO, so do we need to contact them and let them know where things kind of are and are, and are developing, and if so, do we need to do that <coughs> Uh, in written format or simply make the contact? I know that uh, JJ is a county commissioner and I'm sure he goes to the NACO stuff and I have had conversation with him. He was going to try to make it here today but I, he was hoping this agenda item was going to go a little later I believe so he could make it down here. He will be in town tonight. Uh, we can have this conversation with JJ Goikichi who is a Eureka County Commissioner. Uh, if JJ thinks we need to talk to somebody else with NACO, we could do that. Uh, I think NACO has their own thing going. I think the Department of Ag has their own thing going. We would have our own thing going. It would just we would have a, a common goal, and uh, but for different reasons. 
So I, I, we can address it with JJ tonight, and if we need to talk to somebody else, I don't know if it would be a letter or we can just tell them where I could make a phone call or you can make a phone call and tell them where, where we're at in the process. But uh, I think they would like, Nick would like us to be further than we are right now, but I think that they would, uh, even though we're not further than we are, I think they would appreciate that we had this discussion today and we are working in that direction. Maybe not as fast as they want, but I remember Nico's talked about this for a couple of years, and it took them a long time to figure out how they were going to do it. It wasn't an overnight thing for Nico either. It, Nico, I bet it was two years I heard about it before the suit was finally filed. So it, it's nothing that people take lightly, and it's nothing that you can just jump into and say, yeah, I'm going to do this. It, uh, it takes a while to get it right. And when you get into one of these, right is better than quick. I, I firmly believe that. Anybody else? Seeing none, we're going to close agenda item number 11. We're going to move on to agenda item number 12, crossbow usage, uh, Division Administrator, Conservation Education, uh, Teresa Myola.